Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Episode four of Some Low Grade Gamers. As usual, Some Kind of Gaming is joined by the Low Grade Gamer. And then, boom, we get Some Kind of Low Grade Gaming. Whoa, how creative are we? <laughs> As usual, I'm joined this week by the lovely Laura. Hi. And the beautiful Dan. Hi. Uh, you said last time you prefer to be called the beautiful Dan, so uh, yeah. I thought I would uh, just go Thank straight you. for that. I do appreciate it. I, I remember things. <laughs> How are you, Dan? How you been this week? What's new? What's new in the world of video games? What's new at the Low Grade Gamer? New at the Low Grade Gamer is quite a lot, actually. We have got our digital gaming side of things in full swing now so customers can purchase digital keys from us whether that be steam and nintendo games xbox games and playstations coming soon Um, very cool yeah so that's i think there's 20 or 30 online um digital games at the moment so oh very exciting what's the best one yeah oh um (laughs) Well, okay. What's the best one or child. which one have I been most obsessed with? Ooh, both. Okay. I'm going to go with obsessed with first and I yep. cannot stop playing Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, yeah. You said that last week. Yeah, nice. Are you so, excited for the new uh, remake slash remaster that's coming up? Nah, scared. <laughs> yeah, Don't stuff it up. like that. Yep, we haven't had a good run with remakes recently. No, yeah. no, we have not with anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, I've, I've been playing. I finished the first one last week. So now I'm, now I'm on to the second one. And you know what's really cool is actually playing the, the first one, then the second one. And these are the, these are the originals, of, of course. There's no remastering. No, but not yet. How good the second one actually oh. looks. It's actually okay. pretty impressive. Like the first one is is not the best. There's there's a few glitches. Like sometimes people are missing. Um, uh, so re- just remind us when these games were released or for what system? Uh, they were released for a number of systems, but Knights of the Old Republic was released for the first Xbox. That's where I remember playing it. So that um, and. The second one was on the 360. I was going to say, was that the PS3 360 era? Yeah, so I'm just looking it up now, actually, just because it... That, that's so what 2003. I... 2003. Okay, yeah, wow. Man, that's almost 20 years ago. It's crazy to think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, but the second one just looks so good. Like, So the second one uh, was released a year later. Oh, okay. Only that's a quick turnaround. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it looks significantly better. Mm, it's always nice when a company can really step it up with their second entry. Yeah, no, they've done they've done a really good good job, and I, I don't think I appreciated it as much at the time. But yeah. like right now, I'm playing the the Steam versions. Had to test the digital. Yeah. Game that we were. Uh-huh. What a hard life man lives, everybody. I know. I know. (laughs) There was a lot of work. So many hours. So many hours. (laughs) No, I know. It's actually sometimes takes up your whole life, doesn't it? When we did our free games video, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. (laughs) That would have been so tedious. Yeah. (laughs) Especially when you, yeah, when you're playing the not so good ones. Yeah. There's a lot of shovelware. Cat quest. No, I'm I'm lucky. I'm lucky because I I enjoy, uh, I enjoy Knights of the Old Republic quite a bit. So now that I'm on the second one, I'm pretty pretty pumped. Uh, Yeah, I I do. I do enjoy it a lot. So, what is the best game that you're selling over at low grade digital only? I would say The Witcher Three. Ah, yep. I'm. Definitely not going to argue with that. I am yeah. currently, uh, don't tell anybody, but I'm on my first playthrough of that game. Um, I'm like, I know, I know, right? Just it, 
it just went straight over my head. Don't He's know a why. late bloomer. But yeah, look, I know. I'm late to the party. <laughs> <laughs> he was late blooming on Star Wars. Yeah. Late blooming on <laughs> Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. There's a problem there. Yeah, there's... <laughs> Yes, uh, there's a pattern here, isn't there? <laughs> I miss stuff. I I will try harder next time. I yeah. promise. But The Witcher is, it's it's flat out amazing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely yeah. beautiful game. So 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 intricate. I feel like I haven't done anything. Like I'm quite a few hours into it, and I feel like I haven't gotten anywhere because I've just done so many side quests and met so many people and hunted so many monsters and played heaps of Gwent. Ooh, how good is Gwent? Yes. I, I actually really... Can you get really... like a... It's a card game, isn't it? Yeah, you can, can you buy get... decks. Can you? Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. oh damn. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. You may have revealed should've something been, a little bit early. Your deck. Oh, there we go. Sneak peek. You heard it here first. So... No. We are, actually. and I wasn't. I wasn't going to talk about this because okay. I haven't confirmed it yet. But, but it's, it's pretty much to, confirmed. It's pretty ah, much. He's a so we uh, for pre-order. Ooh. Now this this is late pre-order. I don't even know if I'm meant to be sharing this. But yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Scoop. We got the scoop, everyone. Late pre-order 2022, we're going to have the Witcher Old World Metal Coins. Oh, cool as. Uh, the Witcher Old World, RPG Book of Tales, not that one. Lovely. Uh, the Witcher Old World Mages Expansion. Uh, Old, Old World, World Legendary that, Hunt Expansion. And yeah. this is what I was looking for. The Witcher yeah, yeah, Old yeah. World Additional Dice Set. So we're gonna Oh, have that is cool. Well. Yeah, because in the first two games, you play Dice, not Gwent. Cool. That's so cool. That's so cool. If you guys are just listening to this. Hopefully nobody listens to us. Ear, ear to ear right yeah. now. I'm so <laughs> excited for that. That is cool as... Well, uh, we might just have to be the first pre-order there. Huh? Yeah, Put lock us, us in. Yeah, lock us in. I want done. some dice and I want some coins. <laughs> done. Done. Do done you done have Gwent done. on the website? No, not Gwent as also. of yet. I Would am you guys under play the... with me if I got a Gwent deck? I wish I, I should have got you one for Christmas. Oh, yeah, but it's no perfect. good if I have one and no one else has one. Oh, really? Yeah. Were you, did you ever experience that as experienced that as a kid you were like the one person with a Yu-Gi-Oh deck and no one else like had a proper deck so you, you can't just like split it in half and have half each no it doesn't no. work like that <laughs> no, no. Rules. We, we rules. could try and we could try and play digitally i was gonna say there is uh online like game <laughs> digital game you can play without having how, the physical cards i wonder how big gwint is on twitch i don't know but we can get it there yeah, we could. <laughs> Point is, Gwent's a, Gwent's a great game in its own right. I quite often just hang around playing, playing Gwent instead yeah. of sleeping and doing the things I need to do. <laughs> Anyways, I haven't, haven't been fun. doing much this week, haven't been playing much of anything, so I'm kind of just going to skip over me. I finished The Last of Us finally, but you guys are sick of hearing about that now. Laura, have you been playing anything interesting? Pokemon... Of course, I'm um, hunting for a route. But yeah, I've still been playing a bit more of the Breath of the Wilds DLC. So I finished The Last Beast and now I'm up to um, Maze Kosha. Mm, the monk. Yeah. He is my favorite character in Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I enjoy using him a lot. Yeah, I was considering doing it like starting to do it at like 3 30 in the morning then i was like you know what now nah, i should probably just um <laughs> go to sleep and because it's like another divine beast so it's probably going to take me a while my Cla brain needs to work in classic those things. gaming issues isn't it yeah. classic should i sleep or play this game <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm a sucker for that when i was playing miles morales uh spider-man miles morales for the ps5 i literally skipped out on dinners <laughs> to play that game <laughs> I didn't eat. It was really I, I bad. I really want to play that game. It? Oh, you haven't played it? No. Oh, it's really, it is it's good. really good. Really good. Even the soundtrack. I'm not like super into like hip hop and 
that type of stuff, but it is good, man. Like the soundtrack is really nice. I very much enjoy it. Anyways, I guess we should move on to our first point of call Mm. of, you know, what this podcast is actually going to be about. So we've got a couple of things to go over today. We're going to start off with a couple of small ones and then we'll finish things up with another big one. First and foremost, the Steam Deck has gone into production. Uh, Dan, would you like to explain what the Steam Deck is to those who are uninitiated? We've been following it for quite a while, but it might not be something that everyone knows about. The Steam Deck is, to keep it very, very simple, mm-hmm. uh, which it isn't, but let's let's keep it as <laughs> simple as possible. Oh, Basically, like a Nintendo Switch with Steam OS over the mm. top of it, I guess you could say. So basically PC yeah, games available to play in a Switch form. I have the seen... The handheld PC. Yes. I have seen a lot of people hooking their Steam decks up. So these are obviously people that have them, uh, the prototypes and all that sort of stuff, actually hooking them up to multiple screens. So multiple. I don't know how that is going to function with the actual production models and if that's still going to be a thing but if that's Mm -hmm. the case it's very cool but it's not a standard feature for the steam deck if that makes sense not like the switch where it's got a dock it's you need to use uh, i think it's a usb c into two um into a hdmi and then obviously you need one to charge it so i think it's a little bit of a mess around Yeah, yep. but at the same time, if you want something that's going to be able to play PC games and you don't want to break the bank, it's it's yep. probably a good option. The only problem 100%. is a no-go down here in Oz. Yes. No they are so upset. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. There's also a no-go in Japan of all places. Like... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest market for video games. Could be the second biggest after America, but one of the biggest markets for video games in the entire world, and it's just not available for pre-order there. Can yeah. you? So it's not available for pre-order, but can you buy one? Like once it's just never, just never. No, at this point, nothing has been alluded to or announced further. I have a feeling it is more to do with production numbers and what they're actually able to produce because they, they had a lot of flops. That's what I think a lot of people don't remember. They've had a lot of hardware flops. So yeah, steam has been trying to get into this game for a while now and it just hasn't happened, but the hype around the steam deck is huge. I want to play the Sims portably. Yeah. In bed. That would just be the perfect game for bedtime, isn't it? Yep. I just rate The Sims. And I, I'm not entirely sure what the price point is on the Steam Deck, but I know what the price point is on that computer sitting under me, and it's not cheap. Computers in general are not cheap. So if the Steam Deck comes in, look, even if it comes in at $1,000, that's damn cheap, dude, to be able to play games on Steam. Comp- yeah, cheap. absolutely. And it, it's going to run it well. Like yeah. the hardware in that thing is it's pretty nice. Don't want to get too technical on this because nobody nobody really gives two things about <laughs> about technical aspects. That's that's boring stuff. But it's good, man. It's way way better than the Switch. Oh, yeah, I I think that's that's hard. a big one. I mean, everything's better than the Switch. I think we know. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I yeah. love the Switch, but oh, so do I. It's what one of my favorite consoles of all time i think they've done a yes. fantastic oh, yeah. job with the switch yeah but the, the steam deck is really trying to it, look it'll be really interesting to see when it gets into the hands of more people if it's as good as what everybody thinks it is yes. i mean something that was recently similar you could say new world uh where previous critics and all of that sort of stuff really really rated it and then it's come out now obviously it's due to other issues in in terms of their servers and all that sort of stuff that amazon are allowed to keep or are able to keep up with sorry so it'll be interesting what happens with the steam deck and if there are 
game issues, if that makes sense. Because like, one of the biggest things with PC is you need to update it. Yeah, 100%. And it's modular, so you can't. So what happens with the Steam Deck? How long are you yes. getting out of it? Exactly. Good well, point. hopefully, what's the average lifespan in a console? Seven, eight years, something along those lines. A bit less if it's something average, like the Wii U or something like that. So hopefully, you get that amount out of it. But, I mean, we, we future-proofed our PC, so it will last quite a number of years. And like again, that's that's not cheap. It's not mm. cheap to do. Uh, we just didn't want to have to be replacing things every year or two. Th- think about a mobile phone. How yeah. often are they releasing new Apple phones or Samsungs? Like every year, man. It's insane. Can you imagine if they did that with consoles? Wow, people would be upset about that. Yeah. <laughs> Very much Why so. Why do companies get away with it? It's not it's, fair. It's one Apple of the standard. only industries that does that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's the only one I can think of. And so, people still buy them, man. What? It's bloody crazy. My it's... phone's like, man, I've been, I just always buy like a secondhand one off Trade Me or wait, you guys don't have Trade Me. Gumtree. Yep, Gumtree. Dan is a tech nerd, so he loves his new mobiles, whereas Laura and I are almost the opposite. As long as we can text and make calls <laughs> and access Instagram, eh. Yeah, we don't I can't it. make reels though. My phone, it just crashes every That's time I true. try and make a reel, which you're isn't even hard. You're in need of an hard. update, but you're not going to buy a new one. No. And you're not no. going to buy a new one the year after that either. No. no. You know, Dan, do you do that? Do you buy a new one every year? Depends. <laughs> oh, no, he's part of the problem. Everyone. Well, he's got context, doesn't he? So oh, it's true. all right. He's in, the, he's in the tech industry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I used to be. Not just your regular consumer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be to be fair on me, my last three phones have actually been insurance claims. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's all right. Nice. Ever since I had a toddler, ah, uh, three months old, she broke my first phone. She broke my yeah. phone. Then it's sort of been like a reoccurring theme almost every year. <laughs> so you can get toddler insurance, can you? That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Can you get a life-proof case on those insurance policies? My problem with life-proof cases is they are too thick and bulky and I don't like it. I have well, a look, they're life-proof. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the point, isn't it? They're... Life's bulky. Even this <laughs> case here. Oh, that's a cool case. He's, yeah, he's got a low-grade gamer case, but everyone. It's pretty cool. This case here is probably the bulk of thick thickness that i can deal with and Mm. the reason i like it is it protects the camera so it's got sort of a indent for the camera so that way you can put your phone down this is my google phone as you can see you can't really put it down no yeah because the camera sticks out tiny yeah true don't want want to scratch it i like these flippy ones that you can keep your cards in yeah that i can't use Drives me nuts. Wallet. That way I don't have to lose my wallet. Yeah. If I lose my wallet, I lose my phone at the same time. There's less chance of me doing that. I've got a dad case also. <laughs> is that a Galaxy S3? Like literally the same case that my dad has. It, it is. Is that an S3 <laughs> or an S4? Notice. The Samsung. Oh, dude. I don't, Probably even, I don't even know. It's an old one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a four. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, I mean, it's, it's better right than then. three, right? Yeah. Step up from three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, we, it's old. It I works, used to so. sell them. Yeah, that see, that's... A long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, it's old. It's old news, 100%. You know what's not old news, though? PlayStation, a plate. <laughs> ah, that's new news. Do you like that, how I just moved on to our yeah, next subject good, there? Very good. So for those who don't know, and I only found out due to it being Jack and Daxter's 20th anniversary, everybody. Just quickly touch on that. Happy One, birthday. Happy birthday, Jack and Daxter. One of the greatest yeah. games of all time. So I was scrolling through Naughty Dog's Twitter account, reading all the, the lovely tweets mentioning Jack and Daxter. And I discovered a little thing called PlayStation to Plate. I'm very intrigued. I was very intrigued because I'm a chef in real life. That's my day job. I cook food for people. So I was, it in, instantly sparked my interest. It's only Australian. It's exclusive to Australia, which is 
We don't get a lot of that, so that is awesome. PlayStation have teamed up with a number of restaurants and with the delivery app Deliveroo, which is basically Uber Eats, but a different version. The kangaroo version. The kangaroo, exactly. The the Aussie version. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And they're making meals inspired by PlayStation games. How cool. How random. (laughs) Yeah, Pretty random, it, but it's such a good idea. How has nobody thought of it before? So is the they've only got three yeah. dishes so far. Three dishes so far. Two are Naughty Dog IPs, which is why Naughty Dog was promoting it. So they got Ali's Steak Sandwich from The Last of Us Part 2. That is available uh, from Mary's Restaurant in Sydney. So for those of you in New South Wales, hit up Mary's and get you yourself get, a steak sanger. I think it's just a Felix cheese steak, but Ooh. I mean, I would get it if I've I was I've never had Sydney. one of those. No, neither have I. So no, no. there you go. Yeah. Maybe this Here's will be your, your first ever Philly cheese steak sandwich, everybody. Not You've heard it me. here first. <laughs> get on it. Yeah, it sounds delicious. At the Italian Bowl in Newtown. Now, I don't know which state Newtown is in, unfortunately. Sorry, bad research on my behalf. They've got the Thief's Pasta from Uncharted 4, another Naughty Dog entry. Yum. Yeah, absolutely. And the guy who's making this pasta honestly looks like the coolest dude. He's like real proper Italian, just like, yeah, family. <laughs> but, uh, you know how they are. <laughs> I, I do. Um, I've got personal experience. I was going to say, you've got Italian heritage, don't you, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Newtown, for those that don't know, uh, is actually in Sydney. It is in Sydney. There you go. Two in Sydney. Share the love. I was going to say. Share the love, Sydney. It's really unfortunate because almost all of the other states get left out. I'm sorry to the other states. Victoria and New South Wales, they, they get the bulk of good stuff. Dan's in Adelaide, for those of you guys that don't know. So... Yeah, sorry to him because the last restaurant is in Melbourne and that is Bistro Morgan. And this is the coolest one. This yeah, coolest so one. thankfully this one's in Melbourne because it's the one I'm the most intrigued Absolutely. by. We don't get Deliveroo because we're out in the boonies, unfortunately, but we will go to the city and we will get one. They're doing the, oh God, I've got to read this one pretty closely. This, the Serangian, sorry about my pronunciation, Serangian Honey Moose. Yum. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's green. Is it? Yes. Oh, you must remember from the game. It's inspired by the latest Ratchet and Clank game. So there's a level in that where you've got to protect a chef because they're collecting ingredients to make this mousse. And you can go anywhere with that because it's it's ob- obviously those ingredients don't exist on Earth. <laughs> so this, <laughs> this guy's just run with it and created this... Honestly, pretty delicious looking moose trifle mm. thing. Is it green? Yeah, it's green. Oh, yeah. it's actually green. <laughs> yeah, it is actually right. green. I'm looking at yeah, it now. Dude. Yeah, what a right. Cool idea. Yeah, it looks. It looks pretty good. I'm so, not where lie. do we need to go to get Deliveroo? Uh, I have no idea. I think we're gonna have to book a hotel and then just get to get Deliveroo. Because <laughs> yeah. it's only Deliveroo, isn't it? You can't go in. No. And order it? Yeah, okay, oh, actually, yeah. that's what I was about to ask. Is That is a good question. Yeah. Actually. Can you actually, because it looks like it's only Deliveroo, but. Yeah, yeah. that's what they're advertising it as, as. So PlayStation is obviously pushing this, not necessarily to promote these restaurants, but to promote their games. Mm. So they're pushing the Deliveroo app thing. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Look, if it was my restaurant, I would have it available in store as well. Yeah. But maybe because they're being sponsored by PlayStation yes. and Deliveroo. probably Deliveroo. They yeah. Don't. Well, they, they must have some kind of partnership, I guess. Yes. There's definitely some kind of, kind of affiliation there. Maybe they're not allowed to do that. So it is only through the app. But maybe we park outside the restaurant. Get them to right. deliver it to our car. Yeah. <laughs> deliver it. Yeah, we're literally outside. <laughs> leave it at that the, leave it at the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or get it delivered to the shop next door. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. I'm very tempted. So maybe next week we'll let you know how the yeah. uh, honey moose went. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, I'm sure I they saw... would, they would do it anyway, you would think. Even if it's... Yeah. So. E- 
it would be silly for Sony to limit the marketing here. Yes, mm. it would be a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I would have it in big letters on my on my shop front saying PlayStation. What's it called? PlayStation to plate. Come oh, get your honey moose. Such a it's Come such get a your honey idea. moose. <laughs> <laughs> your Serangian honey moose. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I'm just really excited that it's an Australian thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I know Melbourne has a pretty good food scene, but I mean, it's nothing compared to like Paris or the UK or even New York. So cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I really would yeah, have thought this is something idea. that Europe would have gotten as opposed yeah. to us. So or yeah, the PlayStation. I know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if it was Deliveroo's idea and they took it to PlayStation. Or if it's the opposite way way around, yeah, I'm I'm not sure, but I'm really excited that we're getting something. I actually saw this tweet on Twitter when I was looking it up. This person had asked, "Oh, is this coming to Nevada?" And somebody replied with, uh, "Australia is not a state in America, so no." <laughs> Just not let a- us have this one yeah, thing. Yeah, come on, you yeah. guys have so much cool stuff in the states. We we need something. Man. We're off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We need something cool. So, yeah, let's just look. It's a little, it might not mean anything to most of our listeners, and that's okay, but Australia gets exclusivity on something, and I'm okay with that. Mm. That is very exciting. Yes. Anyways, moving on to our third little, our third little point. The Nintendo 64 online service on the Switch has received its first ever update. Are you excited about this one, Laura? I look, I am excited. Mm-hmm. It's Paper Mario is coming to the N64 online service, which is an amazing game mm-hmm. and it's quite expensive to buy it physically. Yes. So it's a pretty good bonus, but. I don't know. It's like it's only that one game. There's so like <laughs> you don't want to be mean, do you? No, I don't Just because that. it's it's good to have Paper Mario, but it would be nice if there was a little bit more. Laura's always the optimist here, in case you haven't noticed, everyone. If they could have given us a bundle of games, mm-hmm. some from like you know some of the other sections, like the Sega Genesis, they could have thrown some more games in there. Mm-hmm. That would have been nice. There's still Ness. A Christmas and... bundle. Yeah. Yes. A Ness Christmas bundle. You know. Yes, I agree. We're coming into the holidays and this is the only thing Nintendo can give us. Yeah. Surely. I I find it a bit odd here because yes. why are they releasing just one game? So, so to me, there's a couple of thoughts that run through my head. Number yep. one, are they releasing a game any game as quick as they possibly can rather than holding them yep so are they waiting until potentially licenses or you know other bits and pieces whatever it is and then releasing it like that just to try and get people off their back if that makes sense or uh, yeah what are they thinking i don't get it so the licensing issue like paper mario's nintendo right yeah, I meant I meant just as a whole, you know, just like Banjo yeah, Kazooie yeah. as an example. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. But if they've, if they've, like, if they're able to release Paper Mario, like, surely they could. There's release... a lot of Nintendo games yeah. that they could release that they don't have to get licensing for. Exactly, That's Smash Brothers. Exactly. How good would Smash Brothers be for mm-hmm. Christmas? Yeah. yeah, you can play it with your family. You can play. It what with are they doing online as well? What is what is what, the I'm, end goal sorry. here? Nintendo Life did uh, ask Nintendo themselves for a statement and Nintendo said, basically, they don't know. So it was a statement that is a non-statement. Well, they said they don't know. They said there's no plans on what exactly is going to happen with the rollout of Nintendo 64 games yet because they were like the rest of us and they're like, one game? Like, is that it? Are we going to get one game every month or one game every two months or are we going to get you know two games every month or has it even been one game every month or has it been so our last 
update obviously the 64 release that was yeah. that was big that was november mm. or october somewhere recently before that it was june or july that the last super nintendo game was added and before that it was march that the last nes game was added so that's a long time if it was releases. consistent yeah that would be a lot that's better and if we yeah, if we knew what we were getting and, like, maybe you're like, oh, it's only one game, but it's okay. We're going to get another one next month. Yeah. But it's like, are we or is it going to be another six months and then we're going to get another one game? Then There's it, no like, definitely it. makes it not worth it for somebody who is wondering whether to get it or not. Exactly. Yeah, don't forget, this isn't stock standard Switch Online. This is an expansion pack. An expensive one. Yeah, that has, well... Paper Mario comes out on the 10th. So as it stands right now, nine 64 games and like 14 Genesis Mega Drive games. But I mean, they're available on a pack anyway that you can buy on the eShop. So is it worth it as it stands? They're not They're not helping themselves, are they? No, yeah. We still haven't got Mario RPG for the older systems. Mm. We still I, haven't I'm, got a bunch of Ninja Turtles games. I'm still pissed off I bought it. Oh, you're one of those, are you? Uh, Look, yeah, I mean... Uh, the experience sorry, is not good enough. Yes. Okay. No, totally fair. I, I will not argue with that. That's the problem. Like, I was really pumped to play Ocarina of Time, and I'm really yeah. pumped to play Majora's Mask, and I probably still yeah. will, but the yep, experience definitely. is is crap. Are we allowed to swear? I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Crap is probably as Acceptable. far as crap. That... I bet it perfectly explains what yep. Switch Online has become. And even they literally just did a software update to not only the Switch, so they've just done a software update to the Switch, but they also did a software update to the mobile app. And oh, did... oh, that's right. They've got a mobile app. Yeah. It's so bad. I forgot it existed. <laughs> what is the point? <laughs> oh, there yeah, is none. Yeah, pretty much. There is so no point. I, I remember downloading it and being like, oh, yeah, uh, what do I do now? If we didn't, if I wasn't 100% going to get the Animal Crossing DLC regardless, then I would probably be in your boat, Dan. Yes. Mm. The yeah. Animal Crossing DLC is the only thing that has saved that for me because I'm so, like, obsessed with Animal Crossing. Yes, Animal Crossing is fantastic. If you plan to get the Animal Crossing DLC... Get the expansion pass. Yeah, why not? Because the prices are comparable. You... Well, I think the DLC is like thirty or forty dollars. Yeah, and the expansion is I think it's like seventy. Yeah, altogether though. But when you compare it to the original online, oh like yeah, it's only like thirty or forty. Okay, more, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Than the original I get where you're online. coming yeah. from. So get the expansion pass if you're going to get Animal Crossing DLC. Hundred percent, definitely worth it. But that brings up another point. Are we going to get more DLCs? They just don't, they're not telling us. PlayStation is releasing for their PSN online, you get three or four PlayStation 4 games and one PlayStation 5 game if you have a PS5 every month, guaranteed. Every single month. There Consistency is, no, is key. No ifs and buts. Yeah. And people know that. So they want that. They get that. They get PSN for that. And Game Pass, geez, don't even get it started on Game Pass, but Xbox Gold, is it Gold? One of the lower tiers? They get that as well. Correct, Dan? Sorry, I don't actually have that. They get a couple of they get a couple of games. They get significant discounts on games as as well. But I I just think transparency and clarity are are key here. And I, yeah. don't, I don't want these podcasts to turn into, and neither do you guys, want them to turn into Nintendo bashing sessions because we are pro, oh, pro Nintendo. All, Laura all and I, I make love almost Nintendo. exclusively Nintendo content. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, we love them. Like, but they're not helping. They're not helping that themselves. No, nah, they're not. No, nah, not at all. It's okay to love a company but not love the decisions that they make. That's fine. But again, we we bought this expansion pass. We bought the family pack, which makes it definitely a hundred percent more worth it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on the price differences, but it's it's far cheaper. Even if you're buying it for two people, it's far cheaper to just get a family pack, and you can then split that with up to eight people. So if you're doing that, 
hundred percent. If anyone interested, send us a message on Instagram or something. We'll hit, hook you up to our family <laughs> plan. We've got six free spots. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's better. But yeah, I, as you said, transparency. Like, yeah, it's Nintendo. Who knows? Who knows yeah. what the hell is going? On? You know who is trying to do better with their online service though, and uh, being somewhat transparent about it. PlayStation. Take yes. it away, Dan. So, PlayStation Spartacus, as it's been mm, branded, I guess, or code named. Sorry. Yeah, working title, I think. Yeah, there's a couple of there's a couple of different thoughts on this. So you've got Bloomberg, which which released an article, I think, two days ago now about oh. it, and then you got Forbes, which. Uh, also released an article uh, a day or so ago. and So for those of you that don't know, Bloomberg and Forbes are both business-orientated websites and I think they also run magazines. So they're not specifically yeah. gaming-related. This is coming from a business side of things. Yes. And Sorry. I think... See, I think where Forbes went with this, I, I disagree with where their thought pattern is because... Some people are saying it's a Game Pass competitor. Others are saying it's not because of blah, blah, blah. So Forbes' excuse was basically that PlayStation have said no AAA uh, PlayStation exclusive games will not be on their day one. Yep. So, and the other thing is, is it's not going to be multi-platform. I mean, to be honest, no joke. Where, what? What, where were they going to go multi-platform? What do you mean multi-platform? As in like, like the Sony Game Pass is available on a PC and yeah, a Xbox. Microsoft, which is Microsoft. Yeah. What do people want from these companies? <laughs> well, potentially. <laughs> what, they like a, deliver, a Deliveroo Game Pass for yeah. PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Maybe Quick that's what they want. Did you guys see the games console that KFC released? Wait, what? Yeah, KFC released a full games console. What? Yeah. What does it come in like a KFC Happy Meal or something? No, nah, dude, it's like a full like seven hundred dollar console. I don't know much about it, and we won't get into it. But oh, it's hilarious. Next Look week. It up. Yeah. Next week. Okay. I, I want to know you, about this. I promise you, I'll show show Laura some videos, and she's going to be so excited. I want one. <laughs> Do you get it with a cider original recipe? I, th I think. It... Oh God, I'm sorry. We're gonna go on such a tangent now. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad idea for me, mate. Sorry. Anyway, back to it. Back to it. <laughs> the original Bloomberg article said that yeah, PlayStation is trying to compete with Game Pass, so it's not multi-platform. Duh. Sorry. Sorry, guys, but uh, they only have the PlayStation, and that's fine. And they're not releasing day one games on the service. How do you feel about that? I, I don't think it's too much of a problem. Like, while I think it is very good to do, at the mm -hmm. same time, you're never confident in whether or not you own something with Xbox, if that makes sense. Oh, totally. 100%. Because they can take that off anytime they want, right? There's no anytime guarantee. they want. Yes. So are they going to do that with tri AAA Xbox titles? I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen any AAA Xbox titles get removed. But there have been, you know, for example, they had GTA 5 on, on Game Pass for like two months or something. Okay. And then took it off. And then took it off, which, really? I mean, to be honest, GTA 5 is done and dusted. Like, stop. Of course. Oh, no, no, no. But that's, that's not the point, is it? The point mm. is that it was, it's, it, yeah, in a blink of an eye, it's gone. So, yeah, I think that's that's sort of, I, I think it's a good alternative, especially you're going to get PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. Honestly, if they bring Jack and Daxter to the PlayStation 5, I will go out, buy a PlayStation 5 tomorrow and sign up. Yep. Like, no, 100%. I, I, will, I will go to every single shop I can to play Jack yep. and Dexter again. So I think the main thing that's going on here is that they want to phase out PlayStation now. 
So if you haven't listened to our first podcast, go back and do that. We've got a lot more information about these online services there. But basically, PlayStation Now is a streaming service. You can stream like 800 older games. Uh, it's nothing special. It's nothing new. Uh, it's nothing overly exciting, but it is a really good option if you missed, uh, say you missed the God of War series, you can go back and play most of those games, if not all of them. Uh, so it is, it is nice to have. So what they're trying to do, I think, is just combine their PlayStation Plus with PlayStation Now and just brand it as one cohesive thing. That's one a bit easier, thing. isn't it? Yeah. Rather yeah. than having two separate ones. And 100%. Well, I was confused. Then you're like, yeah, what is this? I was confused too. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you know, what's the difference? Then yep. you don't need to do so much research into that if it's exactly. just one thing. Mm. So the what the Bloomberg article said was that there's going to be three different levels. The first one is going to be essentially what PlayStation Plus is now. So online you get a couple of free skins and stuff for some games you still get your monthly rotating titles ps4 games and one ps5 that's that's not changing they're happy with their base model and i agree i think i think it's great i think it's definitely worth i think i paid 70 or 80 dollars for a year that's more than fine it's the price of a game i've already made up for that in the games i've played then the second tier is there's no pricing on these, by the way. So we have no idea how much the next tiers are going to cost. More than $80 a year, though, I would assume. So second tier is going to have access to a lot more games, basically. They they've, haven't said what exactly, but it's going to be a library of PS4 games. Yeah, and sorry, PS5. Yes, they eventually... I think was the wording. Yeah, eventually was the word they used. Yeah, that doesn't distill me with a whole lot of confidence. Mm. Um, So, uh, so Forbes said that day one PS5 releases aren't going to come. It's it's no secret that these companies want you to buy the physical games. Mm. Even Xbox or Microsoft with Game Pass, they want you to buy the physical version. They make more money on that. It's obvious, I thought. That's just, that's how they make their money, especially because they're losing money through console sales. So I think it's fair for PlayStation to not want to go that route. Uh, it's, it's a bit scary. It's a big move. It's something they'll probably lose a lot of money on initially. So they don't know how it's going to go. It's, it's, you know, it's scary. It's a big change. So I, I completely understand that. Uh, again, I'm a physical gamer, so I'm happy to buy buy their stuff anyways. And sorry, I got went on a bit of a tangent there. And then the third level of this PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Game Pass thing is going to have a massive backlog of titles from everywhere from the PS1 all the way through. That's including awesome. Including PSP. Mm. That's great because a lot of the PS1 games you get these days and you know the thing with discs is that they get scratched and then you can't play it so none of my i can't play any of my playstation one games from when i was young because they are just all wrecked totally wrecked just the other day i found one of those disc folders i don't know if anyone had those when they were young those things would scratch the discs up something shocking why did our terrible idea yeah they're stupid it's terrible it has a bunch of games in it and i was like well I'm These are done. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're gone, man, for sure. So I'm like, look, I'm, I I love that idea. I never had a PS Vita. So that I'm sure there's a bunch of exclusive games on that thing mm-hmm. that I would be really excited to play. As Dan said, if Jack and Daxter comes, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. So Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, 100%. Is it to compete with Game Pass though? Well... I think in some ways. Maybe it's not necessarily to make, well, it's obviously not like exactly the same as Game Pass. Maybe they don't want to necessarily create a new Game Pass. Maybe they're just trying to improve what they're doing now. Yeah, improve their current service. Yeah. I think people are quick to jump on the compare everything to Game Pass bandwagon. Mm. Well, yeah, it's, it's different in a lot of ways to Game Pass. Yeah, 100%. 
And like Game Pass is probably undeniably the best service, the most pro consumer game service we've got. It's, it's Netflix of gaming. But yeah, the Netflix arguably of gaming. Better because you can download stuff and actually play them natively and without streaming. So people are quick to compare everything to Game Pass, but Microsoft has absorbed a lot of cost mm. when it when it's come to Game Pass, for sure. And that, their servers can tolerate a lot more than what Sony's can. Exactly. Like, you think Microsoft... Like, the Xbox isn't even the first thing to come to people's minds when they think Microsoft. Yeah. Even me as a, as a gamer doesn't think Xbox first when I think Microsoft. I think Microsoft Office or Windows or something <laughs> along... You know Windows what I mean? 10. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what comes to, comes to my mind anyway. And I'm sure... Well, almost definitely people who don't play games they would be they would be thinking the same windows so, 95 yeah. oh right oh do you remember that they yeah. were the days miso has come to say yeah, hi to anyone happens. who's cat is here watching. watching it if you're watching this on youtube he has here's our cat's, our cat's butt, butt. <laughs> he sits on the keyboard hopefully he doesn't hang up <laughs> i will um i will bring something up and go because you know how i'm good at going on tangents yeah no i like the tangents the kf console oh we're back oh to yes the... yeah yes. i'm bringing it back <laughs> that's what they call it kf the KFC. kf console KF. oh my god i want one is it <laughs> what does it look like has it got the has it, it looks got like Colonel a bucket Sanders of chicken it? but black <laughs> <laughs> i'm oh man i just have to look up a picture it's I have to 4K, see this. 240 frames per second. It has a world's first. Now, I don't think this should be a world's anything, but this is a world's first built in chicken chamber. So it does come with a side of original recipe. You've got to cook it. It's it's actually designed by Cooler Master, which is which is pretty cool. They're they're pretty well known. It's got a one terabyte SSD. Sorry, two one terabyte oh. SSDs. <laughs> it's VR ready. It has ray tracing. Not only is it 240 FPS, it's up to 240 hertz. Holy jeez. This thing's a beast. Yeah, it's and just, it's got a chicken it's compartment. It's essentially a PC, isn't it? The chicken compartment, that's what gets me. So what is it? Of course, like, that's what gets you. I don't care about games. I just want to eat chicken. How does chicken. how does it work? Like, what does it play? PlayStation games or they anything honestly, with a disc? Or? It is honestly not clear. Yeah, I'm on the landing page, and that's about all I've all I've got out of it. I would say it is all PC based. Yes, I agree. I would I would say that also. I don't that's think it's anything else. I think it's get on your Jerry, feet you and enjoy the world of virtual reality while the smell of fresh chicken captures your senses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. For those of you that haven't eaten some fried chicken while playing games, it's worth it. Definitely don't. I usually don't because then it gets my controller greasy. Yeah, but it's delicious. But if my console had a compartment, <laughs> maybe I would. You couldn't say no, could you? Does it cook the chicken or you have to cook it yourself Then you, or you get it from KFC, I suppose, and then you put it in the compartment to keep it warm? Mm. Is that what absorbs, like, the heat that the console creates? <gasps> oh, that's such a good idea. Utilising the system's can. natural heat and airflow. Yes! <laughs> They don't need a cooling fan because they just use it to cook chicken. <laughs> oh my god! That is such a good idea. Why? See, why hasn't anyone thought of this before? When 2021. We, uh, I think it was a 2020 release. I'm not going to lie; they were ahead it of their time. It was announced in 2020. It okay, has not yet been now. released. Oh, it hasn't even been released. No, oh, release that's a date shame. Is TB. I would have one if it had. The release date is still to be announced. Look, I think. It might be a marketing ploy. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if this thing actually will ever come into existence. Hold on. But after months of waiting, we finally have the release date. Oh. 
Four days. Really? 10th of December? That's, oh my god, just in time for Christmas. That's <laughs> apparently what I've, what I've got here. Now that I assume amazing. that's US. God knows how much it is though. I can't look up. I was going to say it would almost definitely be a US exclusive for the moment at least. Yeah, it would be. We get PlayStation to play, they get the fried chicken console. <laughs> Bit of trade-off for you guys. But if the Steam Deck you can't pre-order in Australia yet, then you definitely can't pre-order the K-Fry. Yeah, you must just... Are they going to yeah, just sell it in their sh- <laughs> KFC? Can I get a bucket of chicken and a KF console, please? They have to sell it at KFC. What they do? Surely that? that'll be like a, that'll be like a thousand dollar transaction. Surely with two SSDs, a chicken cooker, uh, two, whatever. Two hundred and forty hertz. This thing is insane. easily two grand. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you yeah. You think it so. must connect to your computer? Isn't it, it funny it, that? KFC is winning the console race. Yeah. <laughs> Pick on. up your game to, switch. I have, have to redact my compartment. previous statement of the 10th. Okay. That was an April wanna... Fool's joke. Oh, oh, sad. You know, the whole thing sounds like an April Fool's joke, to be honest. I agree. I but agree. Still, it's, it's still meant to be coming out. We just don't know when. Creating new expectations for gaming. Now every console must have a food compartment. Chicken well, food. I mean, gamers got to eat, right? <laughs> so if anybody... Well, that way, remember you were saying about when you were playing Spider-Man, you had to skip dinner. If you were playing Spider-Man on the KF console, you wouldn't have had to do that. <laughs> the smell of freshly cooking fried chicken would have tempted me over just to my TV to take it out of the console and eat. <laughs> Maybe. It's on hold because of air fryers. Oh, oh what yeah. air fryers have done. Maybe <laughs> they're like, we need to take this to a new level. We need to air fry, not just keep the chicken warm. We need to actually air fry these bad boys. Oh my god. <laughs> the future is now. The future is chicken, well, Mac- apparently. McDonald's, <laughs> Subway. What are you guys gonna make, hey? Eh? Yeah, get on it. Hungry Jacks. Oh, a yeah. VR headset that has a little mechanical arm and a fry holder, and it just goes like and delivers them. <laughs> delivers <laughs> just food. Deliveroo's them straight to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that is a possibility. That's what I want to see next. Copyright. Yeah. I've just copyrighted it. Sorry. Nobody Next's needs. Still. Nobody needs that beer hat that people have. Yeah. All people want is a chip dispenser in their VR headsets. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> then I would probably get a VR headset. I would die happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait for that to come out. Uh, let me know when the pre-orders are out. Yes. Sign um, me up for one of those too. I will try and get access to the KF console. That would Thank be you. Fantastic if you could. Yeah, look, I think we would... Even if it's just for the laughs or for the YouTube channel, I think it would be worth oh, it. Oh, we must do an <laughs> unboxing and review. There you go. You've heard it here. Apparently, we're spending two grand on the KF. Watch console, out, everyone. Grigo's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be making chicken <laughs> awesome. while playing Cyberpunk, maybe. No. <laughs> no, it was just one of the games that said it could play. It said it can play Cyberpunk and crisis so well, i guess nothing, we'll be playing crisis nothing can place cyberpunk uh, on on a note about cyberpunk uh roland is <laughs> still not at the butcher roland is missing still i checked i've That's checked another few roland. times <laughs> that's gonna be a weekly segment on this pos- podcast i yeah. believe yeah absolutely is roland here nope okay no, well no our special guest didn't turn up no, one day we'll have him as a special guest. I cannot wait for the day that you come on here and say, guess what, guys? Roland, Roland. is here. <laughs> Roland rocked up. I will screenshot Man, the would moment. Be a happy day. Yeah, yeah, true. We'll have it playing at the end of a podcast or something. Well, we would have to do a toast just, to just, Roland. Just here, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> Roland! <laughs> Are we all excited for the Game Awards, everyone? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Who's it going to be? 
I'm intrigued. Yeah. Mm. There's been a couple of announcements of presenters and uh, like entertainment and stuff. And look, I'm excited because it's a big event for the industry, but also, uh, I mean, for the most part, it's just a, it's just a big marketing ploy game announcement thing and some entertainment you know it's not (sighs) well there's so many games that came out this year and one of the things that I noticed about the nominees for the game awards is that for most of the categories it was like the same games over and over again like there was so many other games that like there's not much variety in the game awards what's that about are they even going to talk? My point is, are they even going to talk about the games or are they going to spend 20 minutes having Imagine Dragons playing a set and then be like, yeah, game of the year is this? Well, my hope is that they're going to be- spend 20 minutes giving us new news about Breath of the Wilds, too. Well, that's the thing. Then it's still not about the celebration the game of awards. games that are released this year, are they? I want them to have like, like the Grammys or something, I want them to all have statues. And then they come up and then they give a speech. Why isn't it like that? I, Wasn't I it last context. year that? Yeah. Last year, I think they just read out the names like in a whole list. Yeah. Not it, even a applause in between. Maybe the year before. It was maybe like it was that. the year yeah. before. They I mean, don't... I know it was pretty intense times with like COVID and everything. It was like only streamed, I'm pretty sure, that it was year. Last year. Yeah, mm. last year it was. Yeah, there just wasn't. You know, not even a round of applause in between. No, no, no. It's, it's not. Yeah. Hey, look, we, we can't judge it yet. We're, we're, uh, we're going to watch it. That's for sure. We'll be doing a YouTube video on our thoughts about it. Um, that'll be up sometime next week. But we will be discussing it on the podcast next week. We, you know, we'll give it a chance. We're all, watch- we're all going to watch it. Yes. It's- Look, if, if it gets one new person into games, then, hey, I'm all for it, man. Like, the more gamers, the better, mm. in my opinion. Uh, the more mainstream it gets. Look, people people get upset when their favorite band hits the mainstream, you know? Um, bands themselves get upset when their favorite band hits the mainstream. Like, Nirvana and Nevermind, everyone was upset when that happened. <laughs> but it's ultimately a good thing for not just the band, or in this case, the games, but the industry as a whole and the fans yeah the more fans the more exposure the more games are going to come out the more the your general population takes you seriously man we tell people we're going home to to work on this podcast that we do right now and people laugh at us because it's about video games like why 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 does it have to be like that it's we put effort into this we put time and effort and hard work into it and it goes it's the same for our youtube and our streaming and dan i'm sure you cop it even worse with having a full business yeah it's it's quite funny actually because it's on one hand you get people that go what like are you serious <laughs> and then on the other hand you get people that go that's actually absolutely sick yeah. I want to know everything. Yes. So you sort of lose some, you win some, yada yada. Oh, yeah. Of course. So I, I, I'm just be nice to be taken seriously. That's all. Yes, I think we're a very serious podcast. Probably number one gaming podcast in Australia. Mm. Oh, it's all I'm, very serious. Yeah. Uh, I'm claiming that. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Why not? I can I can edit that into. So, somewhere <laughs> <laughs> number one gaming podcast is there even any others no, no. that's why we're number one because <laughs> there's no competition <laughs> oh, funny as good on us i think we've uh, actually stuck within our time limits this week everyone haven't we i think so good job You've i think a dan's a bit job. tired this week everyone he hasn't gone on on Massive tangents and talked about random stuff for like two hours, like he usually does. No, I'm, I'm... I think we all suffer from that a little bit, though. Yeah, okay, but you're not wrong. I think it was <laughs> me on the tangents today. I reined yeah. myself back in quickly, though. <laughs> Super lucky. 
I'm I'm trying to control myself a lot. <laughs> Right it's now. not always easy to do. No. <laughs> uh, nice. Well, I hope you guys got your weekly dose of video game news and what's going on in the industry. If you have any thoughts, this podcast will be up on YouTube. Feel free to comment on there. Contact any of us directly through Instagram. Laura and I are on Twitch and YouTube as well. Some kind of gaming so feel free to contact us if there's anything you'd like us to talk about next week or in the future or anything along those lines please reach out if you've got any questions don't forget to check out the low grade gamer on their website for all your gaming accessories and now digital games as well don't forget about those christmas is coming up everybody if you're in need of gifts there will be something at the low grade gamer for pretty much anyone be they gamer or not everyone needs a headset don't you hate it when your mum's up at like midnight and she's like how do i turn this youtube video down well guess what you buy her a headset and she doesn't have to she can just put her headphones on and it's all good yeah <laughs> that was a random plug but there you go. buy a headset for your mum, everyone yeah buy a headset the for your mum. <laughs> heard it here first <laughs> thank you guys ever so much we love and appreciate all of you appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to us and we'll see you next week well we'll you'll hear us next week mm, you'll yeah. hear from us next week <laughs> <laughs> we are some low-grade gamers and we'll, we'll catch you next time